Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with uh, Mickey G. This is my third episode on beta oxidation. In this episode, I'll be focusing on how the products of each beta oxidation cycle are linked to the electron transport chain, the citric acid cycle, and ketogenesis. I will also be providing you with a list of questions to help you bring together the information delivered from all three episodes. As you might be aware, each single beta oxidation cycle leads to the production of one reduced coenzyme FADH2 and one reduced coenzyme NADH at steps one and three. Each of these coenzymes links to the electron transport chain. Here they offload their high energy electrons and hydrogens they accepted at steps one and three and then return back in the form of FAD and NAD plus to repeat the process again. The high energy electrons from both NADH and FADH2 act as a fuel source for the electron transport chain, ultimately driving the production of ATP through the process of oxidative phosphorylation. While connecting to the electron transport chain, beta oxidation also links to the citric acid cycle. It achieves this through each acetyl-CoA produced. In short, each unit of acetyl-CoA produced during beta oxidation acts as an entry point to the citric acid cycle. One more interesting thing that you might find of value is the link between beta oxidation and ketogenesis. Now, during times of very low carbohydrate availability to body cells, so for example, during fasting and starvation, very low carbohydrate diets, and uncontrolled type 1 diabetes, the acetyl-CoA produced through the beta oxidation of fatty acids can also be used to produce ketones which in turn act as an energy source for extra hepatic tissues, such as the brain, through the process of ketogenesis. Okay, let's move on now to some questions to help you bring this all together. Okay, so let's get started. In total, there'll be four learning checks. Learning check number one, what are the three major steps required to burn fat within cells? Pause the video. Once you're ready, come back for the answers. So here are the answers to question number one. Okay, let's now move on to learning check number two. Question one from learning check two. Long chain fatty acids need to be activated prior to transport into the matrix. A. Where does this occur? B. Name the coenzyme involved. C. How many high energy phosphate bonds are hydrolyzed in order to complete the process? D. How many ATPs is this equivalent to? Assume that each ATP is hydrolyzed to give one ADP plus a single phosphate group. And finally, question two. Name the dipeptide that is required to transport long chain fatty acids into the matrix of mitochondria. So once again, pause the video and once you're ready, come back for the answers. So here are the answers to learning check number two. Okay, let's now move on to learning check three. Learning check three, question number one. How many acetyl-CoA's are produced from the complete beta oxidation of a C16 fatty acid? Question two, how many beta oxidation cycles does it take to produce the above number of acetyl-CoA's? Question three, how many acetyl-CoA's are produced from the complete beta oxidation of a C18 fatty acid? And finally, question four, how many beta oxidation cycles does it take to produce the above number of acetyl-CoA's? Once again, pause the video and come back for the answers. One more learning check to go. Let's move on to learning check four. 
Learning check four. Question one, list the four steps of a beta oxidation cycle. Question two, briefly describe what happens at each of these steps. Question 3a, how many FADH2s are produced per cycle? B, what metabolic pathway is FADH2 linked to? Question 4a, how many NADHs are produced per cycle? B, what metabolic pathway is NADH linked to? And finally, question 5, which metabolic pathways can use the acetyl-CoA produced during the beta oxidation of fatty acids? Once again, pause the video and come back for the answers. Okay, so here are the answers. I hope that you found this presentation to be useful. In my next episode, I'll be teaching you how to calculate the number of ATPs produced from saturated fatty acids. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening.